Bingo. What's his name? Oh, pop. Fresh pop to start off a fresh running back prospect. A little first look of uh, the 2019 running back class here. We're going to get into David Montgomery. Hit us up on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. If you're listening on YouTube, give us a little thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button as well. Help us out. Make sure you click the little bell in the corner there so that when you do subscribe, you get notifications that we put a new video out. Absolutely. That way you can see it all right as it come out. Let's get it going. David Montgomery, 5'11", 216. So was was in the 220, 223 range. Seemed to maybe cut down. Yeah, I think he was listed at 222 or 220 or something like that in, in 17. And now is listed at 216. So... Right. But he, he just works out nonstop in the off season, so yeah, he's definitely losing good weight for sure. So it's going the right direction. Seventy-one total career receptions for this guy. We'll start right there. Strong, uh, pretty pretty strong. It's not insane, but it's it's good. Um, there's, I think he's got solid hands and solid coming out of the backfield for a three-year career. Seventy-one receptions is something it's, to it's write pretty home good. about. It's pretty Absolutely. good. Absolutely. A lot of the times when he's not having a great day on the on the ground, he's having a good day through the air, and sometimes it's both. Yeah, um, big, big ceiling there with the with the PPR for sure. So the, there's a, that's a lot of people's reservations about a lot of guys. This is what elevates him up high, not only because of all the things we're going to get to on the running style, but the passing game is there, and then on top of that, the pass protection I think is really good. I think you know when he when he. When he keys you up, he's he's mostly going to lay you down. When he knows who his assignment is, the pass protection is is pretty solid. I, there's sometimes when they throw some blitzes at him and he doesn't quite know who he's supposed to pick up, gets into himself into a little bit of trouble. But I mean, that's that's nobody's perfect, and he's definitely out there laying down yeah. some good blocks. So I, I'm so not, I have no concerns about his pass protection. Outside of the total receptions, uh, being being really good, and and there's. A clear passing game PPR floor here as far as fantasy drafts go. Um, I'm not saying that he's he's similar to Benny Snell, but kind of the stuff we're going to say about him is going to be similar to the kind of stuff we said about Benny Snell. Sure, um, they're similar ish type running backs. Right, this guy's just a little bit more agile and like the quickness and uh, explosiveness is, is much more evident. Right. And the long speed is, is probably a little bit more. Definitely there. better. Even though it's not top end elite long speed. It's, it's definitely not ridiculous. He's so fast, but um, it's fast enough, but he's, he's plenty fast. And just like Benny Snell, when he's in the open field galloping, you still have to tackle him. I'm not sure if he's actually five eleven or not. He looks like he may be a little smaller, shorter than that to me, but he looks like a, he's meaty. Yeah. He's thick he looks up. bigger than two sixteen. Yeah, I, I I agree. He's he's big out there, and that, like Jay Wayne said, the the work ethic on this guy, um, and the character on this guy are are all phenomenal. Um, you can't say enough good things about him. He's a high character guy. He was an Eagle Scout, right? Um, which is not something you hear too much about. And just uh, the the biggest takeaway just refuses to go down physically and mentally. And there's a great video out there on YouTube from Cyclone TV on him. And just really illustrates kind of what this guy's all about, right. um, and it just number one, if you weren't into him, it makes you into him. But I don't know how you couldn't be into him because his playing style is awesome. But this reflects his playing style to a T, and, and right. why he is so good, and why he is the way that he is. Right, football is not just a game to to David Montgomery. He, he comes from a pretty poor upbringing, single mom, doesn't know his dad. Had had to had to work hard. Gets a hard work ethic from his mom. His mom is basically everything to him. He yeah. gives her credit for for almost everything. He gives football a ton of credit for where he currently is and right. where he would be without football. Is not something he wants to think about. Didn't take it to the streets. Right. He said he had to. You know, you had to work hard to get where he is. But and he you wants know, to be an example for these kids right. who loves to go back home and show them that hey, there's another way. You can do it this way. Right. Hard work will pay off. Right, the coach in that video you're talking. He he's he was talking about how on Friday and Saturday nights in January and February, when most college kids are out having fun, he's in the facilities putting in work, whether that's film or working out. And yeah, and he said about that something along the lines of, you know, yeah, sometimes I think about, you know, 
maybe maybe I should go out there off. and take a day off. And he was like, you know, but I, every day, I just try to use every day like it could be my last day and just right. try to, you know, work as hard as I can. Because what he's got going on is right. so big and what it can do for, for a family. So many different people in and, his life. Right. He just, he doesn't, he takes it so seriously. They asked him, like, what football means to you, and he got damn near teared up. Right. And, you know, he just, he just so... so he turned hard. There's a good quote. He turned hard work into the norm versus the exception at, at Iowa IU. State. Cause, cause Changed the whole culture. He was in there working out, and then he one of his buddies that he grew up with ended up going to Iowa State with him. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was just a trickle down effect. There was more. There was oh, well, there was two guys in there working out with him in January and February. Then there was three. Then there was four. Then there was six. So just like you said, a great example of of you know. You don't have to worry about this guy going to the next level and and doing something stupid and slacking right. off like th- this guy Hands is the, right. the epitome of he's going to make everybody around him better what? and want to be better and respect him and, you know, ready to go to war with him. Right. I, I like the story you told it to, to expound upon on the Eagle Scout like he was in the Boy Scouts and got into football, but didn't want to quit the Boy Scouts until he got till he was he an finished. Scout. Yeah. He, he wants wanted to, be to finish the best at everything. He, he does. wanted to finish, and I love that part where he's like, "All right, I'll, I'm almost. I'll play football, but I'm gonna keep going with the Boy Scouts until I get top level, which is pretty badass." Right. Because, like you said, not a lot of people make it to an Eagle Scout. Right, and not a lot of guys who were, you know, in his area from, you know, his background playing football are gonna stick it out. To, to stick in the Boy Scouts. It shows you, know, you what kind right. of person he is. Right. Uh, so the last thing on the character there is, uh, was it his offensive coordinator or the head coach? Offensive, offensive coordinator. coordinator said he's like the best human being ever. Ever. Yeah. Set was the quote. Right. And it's just like, it's just, this is a really, really good guy. And uh, so definitely want to make that a, a big, bold thing of, of, something great about David Montgomery to go along with all these great things that we're about to. Right expand upon right which i don't think is any of this is really a big secret he's probably the number one running back prospect on most people's board is that fair to well um, so he's definitely like like i said i haven't got through the evaluation product process with very many guys for for sure and then a but a couple other guys looked at some people have josh jacobs some people have damian harris um daryl henderson or daryl henderson Trayvon. or um some people are Texas A and M guy. Yeah, th- so the, none, none of those guys are maybe up there, but Josh Jacobs and Damian Harris and Rodney Anderson are probably some of the guys that are near the top of most people's lists. If David Montgomery isn't one, one of those three guys probably is. Yeah. Um, but for me right now, I haven't watched those guys. David Montgomery is clear cut the number one guy for sure. We watched. We saw enough Iowa State during the regular season to know how good this cat was. We've dropped his name several times on the yeah. show. In, in in episodes past, this not offense really talking about this. In my class, opinion, but. this season really changed when Purdy came in there, the freshman, and and really lit it up. And Iowa State really got on the right path, beat a bunch of pl- beat a bunch of good teams. They were kind of struggling to get it going to start the season, and Purdy came in and and was really good. And, and David Montgomery benefited from some of that this year. Um, not not the greatest offensive line over there at Iowa State, so he kind of had to do it on his own uh, for the most impressive. part, but. Uh, some of the good things about him, like for me, it's fluid is is something that I would characterize him as. Looks easy. The body bend and the elasticity is in his body is tremendous. And to me, I think that's something awesome for a running back. Um, kind of in saying that he's his the lateral agility is one of my favorite things about him. And he's so quick. And then to put on top of that, that way he can bend his body and have his feet off to the right and the rest of his body off to the left or vice versa and just be bent like a an s and just making guys miss that way is is awesome but the lateral quickness and agility is fantastic with this guy and the ability to string together multiple moves whether that's going around someone or running through them he just strings so much together he does the shimmy and the the wiggle shoulder fakes and the jabs and the big jump cuts and all that stuff together he's just and then you put all the agility and the, and the explosiveness together, and you put that with power to to grind right. out tough yardage situations, short yardage situations. Um, it's just it's just he's got a combination of everything you want: the balance right. to stay on his feet amongst weak arm tackles. Like you better not come with a weak arm tackle on this guy either. Right. Um, the speed to to set the edge for the most part. Um, 
Yeah, it absorbs contact and 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 then dulls it out. Right. Um, like what? what? It's like a superhero. Right. Uh, who is it? Like a rogue? You, you touch. She touches someone and then gives it back to him. Or? Just kind of absorbs it and then blows it back on him. Right. Um, just again, I, I agree with you. I think he really has all the tools. There's not a ton of weakness. Maybe a touch on the vision behind the line. Sometimes he does run into his own guys. Usually makes it work out. Some of that is probably because this isn't the greatest offensive line. He's ran behind, but again, it is pretty impressive that he did what he did. Um, I think the vision is pretty, there. I, pretty I don't. Solid. I don't think. I don't think it's like a huge knock, but I think there is sometimes where it just looked like he kind of went into the back of some guys. But yeah, there's definitely an uncanny ability for him to get lost in a big crowd of guys and come out on the other side of that clean and and with even more yards. Like he right. just he's just so hard to bring down. Which the tackles broken uh, attained to that. Um, he led the FBS in broken tackles in 2017, broke Dalvin Cook's record of 86 um, with 102 missed tackles. Um, he was pushing for the lead in 2018. Uh, I think Devin Singletary took that home. Again, it's hard to find broken tackle stats. You just kind of have to get them where friggin' someone else is giving them to you. Right. Um, but I just I can't say enough good things about this guy. We haven't even, you know, the receiving game – is, is something to really rest your laurels on the hands he catching you see him line up out wide from time to time uh some one-handed catches ability to 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 put things together we were talking about the uh oklahoma state game in 2017 um just having his head in the game and being just just doing everything for his team um he he's a, the guy right there 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 no timeouts left in the fourth quarter and they're driving they're down had a solid one-handed catch, made a couple guys miss, gets out of bounds with no timeouts. Kept the drive moving. A couple plays later, it's fourth and 13 with 44 seconds to right. go, and they throw it short of the sticks. He, he runs a little curl straight out from the backfield, short of the sticks. And, and it makes, looked like they were going to him the whole time. Yeah. Makes the first guy kind of miss, then makes, Silly the, move. then makes the second guy miss, then carries like three more guys down to like the three yard line just a, just an insane play but this is what he's just there's a bunch of wow plays with david montgomery i think if you could pair that with a little bit better offensive line and a little bit better just all around offense you could just be a an awesome uh nfl player here i think there's just he has all the tools i just don't i don't think it's he's la very landing spot dependent he's a plug mm -hmm. and play guy right he's ready to go i don't three see down guy right three there's no reason to take him off the field He's I just he's great in the open field like he, he just gets a bunch of extra yards he can set defenders up by making them lean one way and cutting the other way he just he's good at creating leverage and keeping people off balance right. and then if you're off balance at all he's gonna run right through rarely you. does one defender get the job done no way. against David Montgomery right um, he creates on his own again whether it's cutting you up or going through you he doesn't need anybody's help to really win which you know is, was kind of his mo at iowa state i will say probably you know maybe my biggest knock on him is sometimes he probably does try a little too hard and on the next level probably could be dinged for that a little bit and just needs to go get the yards that are there but a lot of the times they weren't really blocked for him very well right and, you know but there is some times where he should have just hey just get that one yard and right. there's times where it was third and one and he turned it into a huge play but it could have been a disaster Right. Um, but like you said, I mean, he had so much success creating right. extra yardage that it's hard to... I don't think you want to compress it too, too much because he's so sick at making ridiculous plays that you don't want to say, hey, don't ever do that again. Right. Um, right. But, you know, he, he could be dinged a little bit for trying too hard to get to get the big play when you should have just got the first. Um, this guy is so good that even Roto World can't hate. I had to. I literally wrote down, "Holy shit!" A sensible Roto World blurb. Look at listen to this. Montgomery five eleven two sixteen just keeps churning along. His yards per carry average won't impress you. Today it was three point eight. This is referring to the Texas Tech game, uh, which Texas Tech actually had like the fifty fifth best ranked defense. Decent for defense. Rushing. That's why they uh, fired Clins Clinsbury. They're like, "Are you guys are playing defense? Get the hell out of here." <laughs> No so, defense here, buddy. I'll continue here, but but don't. Of course, there's a spelling error. Can't really have a roto world without a spelling error. But won't let the NFL draft types tell you in the spring that this is a negative for his evaluation, referring to the yards per carry. Context is crucial. Since, Since when? When <laughs> roto world? When are you? 
thinking about context. Montgomery has been dealing with injuries for the most part of the campaign, and he's running behind a shoddy line. Montgomery is a versatile, broken tackle machine whose motor always runs hot. I couldn't believe it. Context is crucial. How about that? There is there is a God. (laughs) Roto World. Roto World really really hit me out of nowhere with that one. Crazy. I could not believe it. Crazy. So can't say enough good things about David Montgomery. No, he can receive, he can run, he can be your workhorse, he can make you miss, he can run over you. Right. I can't see taking another running back over him, and I can't see taking a wide receiver over him, even though I haven't really looked at any of these wide receivers. Right. He's probably my number one guy right now. Well, I mean, again, we are not we don't don't know, and uh, (laughs) I haven't looked at Josh Jacobs or Damian Harris or Rodney Anderson, really. I've looked a little bit at Rodney, but... Rodney looks pretty phenomenal this this, this past year, if it weren't for injuries. I don't know anything about these wide receivers. Right. Um, but they're all tall. I'm usually we're usually pro running back here in, in rookie drafts. Um, and I'm sure you'll hear that all summer long. But Montgomery's got everything you want. I don't care. Again, we talked about it with Snell. Like, I don't need the combine to tell me a damn thing nope. about David Montgomery. I don't care what he does there. I don't care if he walks through his three cone drill <laughs> and runs a four eight. It doesn't matter. Like right. he's there's a million things on tape to suggest how good this guy is and how well he can play football. And then to top it all off with the high character, I'm all in. Uh, there's, there's just, yeah. Okay. If, if, well, if he goes to the combine and doesn't run and runs a four, six and a, and a over seven second three cone drill, is he out of your top five for rookie? Tri- like, no, 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 he's not. No, like I'm not even through all my evaluations. So I, I guess I can't say that with full confidence, but it's not going to be because of, Whatever happens the in the combine, combine there. Like there <laughs> there are certain things again that matter at the combine and I, I, it's fun to watch and I get excited about it when it's on, but like it's not gonna change anything about David Montgomery for me. I'm good. I've I figured everything I need to know out about David Montgomery. Him being running a four six is not gonna be like, oh, I'm not draft like Dalvin Cook still went in top five of most of those drafts and he's been just fine when healthy. Sure. Well, this was this was awesome for me because I was looking forward to hearing you guys get into David Montgomery. David Montgomery's been sitting at the top of the DLF uh, rookie running back rankings for about 12 months now, maybe a few more than that. And uh, it's a Joe public easy. Yeah, he's been the number one. I want to take him number one because that's what DLF ADP or rookie rankings told me to do. But when you hear, you know, it's the work that you guys and the research that you guys just put in on David Montgomery jumps off the page. It's, it is easy to see a couple of highlight plays and see that this dude's a badass. But then when you get some of the behind the scenes stuff and you tie it all together, when we saw in a, in a startup draft, I'm trying not to mess it up in a rookie draft. I'm trying not to mess it up. Right. And this dude is a safe, I, if, if I'm putting my equity into somebody, I'm putting my, I would, I'd really, one of my best friends was an Eagle scout in high school and it, you know how much work he had to do to get there and when there was way more better things that he could have been doing, but that was important to him and he had to stick it out when it wasn't cool. And for David Montgomery to be in the facilities in January on a Saturday night when everybody else is out having a really good time. Especially you know, the football players. You know how uncool it is to be in Eagle watching Scout. videotape? To and, be fair, I'm not really sure what's going Is it Ames? Is that where uh, Iowa State is? <laughs> well, I'm not really I'm sure, sure what's going I'm sure there's <laughs> some fun <laughs> stuff going if there's on. A pu- if there's a pub down but the street I get what you're saying. and women are, are allowed, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a, it's a lot more fun to go that way than go over there to right. the rec department. If you're a football player, you could have a fun time. Sure, I mean he he probably goes. I there. had a fun time, and I was just he, just he doesn't party until after after twelve, and that's a good rule. Yeah, you should just wait, let everybody else do the leg work, <laughs> mm-hmm. and you swoop in there. I mean, six he, pack under your arm. I don't think he's that interested in having fun. That'll come later. He's having fun putting in work. I'm sure he's had some good nights, but yes, I'm sure he's had some good <laughs> nights, but yes, he, he's, he's all about it. And so this, that's a really good bow on right now. Again, given the fact that there's more work to be put into the Bama boys and then Henderson and those types of guys that are at the top, it's a pretty good bow to, for your safety of your equity. And you're sitting at the front top of the rookie draft and, if you're not sure what to do and you can't package that pickup for a big name asset, you can put it in David Montgomery and know that you just took a guy who works before he plays. Right. And and I'll take that guy all the time. For so sure. That's 100. solid. Hundred. That's solid. Yeah. Well, wrap it up. Yeah. Let's. Uh, shall we get out of here? Yeah. Let's do it. Snell. Yeah. Snell. Yeah. Snell. You later. 
No, well, uh, if you if you enjoyed what you heard, please go on to iTunes, hit that little five star review button for us. That'd be so kind of you. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Twitter's at i at IMC Myers at Dynasty Big Co at J Wayne's World. You can also find us at the FF Dynasty. We're about to head over to Patreon, and we're gonna go break down a couple more players. Little. Uh, is it Darrell or Daryl? I don't know. I, they say it both ways yeah. when, I, when I was listening to the... Either way, we know everybody wants to hear about Henderson. You got to go over to Patreon to hear that. We're also going to get in a little Justice Hill, top of the name draft if at the very least. Sure. Sounds like... Sounds Justice like, is served. Sounds like a political campaign. We're, I'll die on this Justice Hill. We're taking back Justice Hill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that should be a lot of fun. You know, you can get to there from our uh, webpage, the FFDynasty.com. There's a link to Patreon on that homepage. You can also go to Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Uh, $5 holla. That's it. Five bucks a month. It's literally harder to actually sign up than it is to see that five bucks go away uh, once a month. And you get an extra show. You won't show. Even notice it. You won't notice it. You get an extra show every week. Uh, you get access to the community page. Get your questions answered. That thing is popping off just every day. There's something new. People asking questions. Tons of information from answers and questions asked uh, that you can get out of that. And then uh, after after six months, you get a free T-shirt. So we're sending the first round of those out, and uh, they're pretty sweet and comfortable. So a lot of perks. We're not just asking for money. You get a lot in return, and we have a lot of fun. And it's more tailored to you, people helping people. Plus, you, I know you want to hear more about these rookies. For sure. Right? You got to. So sure. uh, we went a little long on Benny Snell, but, you know, we had to plant the flag, and it didn't seem like 40 minutes. But <laughs> maybe, never, it did, maybe it sounded like two hours for y'all. <laughs> hey, I'm sure there's a negative review somewhere in the works for that, yeah. but, you know, whatever. You got to do what you got to do. And we got to get out of here. We're heading over to Patreon. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.